The reason for exploring The Mummy's Curse from the 1920s was really a sense that it's still an amazingly persistent myth. It doesn't matter how many times uh, august Egyptologists tell us that it's not true or that the British Museum or other museums around the world with large Egyptian collections tell us it's not true. We still believe it. We still have a frisson about going to see mummies all the way around the world, uh, at the um, Metropolitan Museum in New York, at the Louvre, in Berlin, in Trieste, in London. Everyone still kind of has this free song of going to see them. So the question really was, was why had that persisted so far? And I do think it's about, really in the end, uh, a sense in which the artifact won't settle down. It won't uh, just exist as a museum artifact, but it remains this trace, this material trace of a history that we would rather forget. So quite often these artifacts have been appropriated in or gifted uh, by um, colonial um, governments in, in a way that um, still leaves us with a legacy of the historical violence behind them. So there is a sense in which the um, British Museum collection, for example, expanded three times in size during the 1880s as soon as we occupied uh, Egypt, rather than just existed in a different kind of relationship to it. So it's about colonial occupation. It's about the trace, actually, of the wars in which these kind of artefacts were appropriated.